Hello everybody, welcome to another lesson by me, Miss Pythagoras. In this lesson, I will explain more complicated examples on how to find the equation of a tangent to a cubic function. This is lesson 4 or 5. Have you subscribed yet? You can also visit my website. The link is in the comments below. There you will find all the chapters in the syllabus. Let's start with the maths. 1.1. 1. 1. This question consists of two parts. This is the first part. The tangent to the curve of g of x is equal to 2x to the 3 plus px squared plus qx minus 7 at x is equal to 1 has the equation y is equal to 5x minus 8. Stop. Can you see what is happening here? Usually, they gave you a proper equation and then they ask for the equation of the tangent. In this question, it's the other way around. Here, they give you the equation of the tangent and there's, an, there's this function and it has variables in. Now, the question says, show that the point 1 minus 3 is the point of contact of the tangent to the graph. Now let's see, how do you show that a point is indeed a point on, a, on any function, on any graph, and you do that by taking the function y is equal to 5x minus 8, and then you split your equation into a left-hand side and a right-hand side. And then in the left-hand side is y, and your coordinate consists of an x and a y. So in y's place, you substitute negative 3 on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, there's the x. So you substitute 1 in there. 5 times 1 is 5, minus 8 is negative 3. And what can you see? That the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Both are negative 3. And that is how you prove that a point lies on a line. And so therefore, this point 1, negative 3 has to be the point of contact to the tangent and the graph. Now this question has to do with question 1.1. 1 .1. Just remember, in the previous question, I, we have proven that the point 1, negative 3, lies on the graph of the tangent and uh, um, on the curve because it was the point of contact. Now the question here says, hence, calculate the values of P and Q. So where do you find P and Q? They are the variables there in the function. And can you see what is happening now? They are combining your knowledge of simultaneous equations and calculus, more specifically tangents. Now let's see. To find values for P and Q, we need two equations to do simultaneous equations. Now where will we get the equations from? We will start with G of X and the fact that we know that there is this point from the previous sum, 1 minus 3, consisting of an x and a y, that lies on the graph since it was the point of contact. So that point lies on the line and on g of x. So we substitute in y's place negative 3, in x's place 1. Everywhere where we see an x, we substitute 1. Now we can say, 1 cubed is 1 times 2 is 2. 1 squared is 1 times p is p. q times 1 is q minus 7. Then 2 on the right hand side. 2 minus 7 is minus 5. Let the minus 5 walk across. 
and it becomes plus 5. On the left hand side, minus 3 plus 5 is 2, P plus Q, and then I made Q the subject of the formula. So Q is then 2 minus P, and that is my first equation. Now I need a second equation. We know that 1, negative 3, is the point of contact of the tangent to the graph. Now, there's the function. Do you agree that when we find the derivative, derivative means gradient. So we take our original function and we find the derivative. So when you find the derivative, the 3 goes to the front, 2 times 3 is 6, and you subtract 1. So that one, 6x squared. Here, there's the 2, goes to the front, multiplies with p, subtract 1, so that one becomes 2px. This one, there's an invisible 1, goes to the front, finds the q, subtract 1. Q, and then the derivative of a constant is nothing. Now, the, the second equation there, the derivative equation, that one means gradient. Now, let's see. Do you agree that we know y is equal to 5x minus 8? This one is the equation of the tangent. And 5 is the gradient of the tangent. And here we have gradient. So in gradient's place, you can substitute the 5. 5 is equal to 6x squared plus 2px plus q, because that is the place where you will find the tangent. So the gradient of the tangent in that place to that function is 5. Now, we still need to find p and q, and we have an x here. But we can get rid of the x, because we know that there was this point where x is equal to 1. Everything is happening at that point. So in x's place, we can substitute 1. And then 1 squared is 1 times 6 is 6. 2p times 1 is 2p plus q. And then let's make q the subject of the formula. So what I did, 6 walked across, 5 minus 6 is negative 1. And let's make q the subject. So minus 1 minus 2p, that one is q. Now I have two equations. This one is in terms of q. Number 2 is in terms of q. So both are equal to q, so we can equate them. And we can say number 1 is equal to number 2. Therefore, 2 minus p is equal to minus 1 minus 2p. And now we can solve the equation. So the, two, the negative 2p will walk across and it becomes plus 2p. 2 will walk across and it becomes negative 2. On the left hand side, 2p minus p is just p. On the right hand side, minus 1 minus 2 is negative 3. So p's value is negative 3. And then, now that I know that p is negative 3, I'm going to substitute it back into either number 1 or 2. I chose number 1. Therefore, 2... Please pardon the dog's barking. Let's continue. So therefore, you can say 2 a minus times a minus is a plus. 2 plus 3 is Q. And Q's value is equal to 5. Guys, there's a message from my dog, Karosi Valentino. Let's continue with the work. The question says, determine the value of x where the gradient of the tangent to f of x is equal to, and then I give you x minus 5 squared is equal to minus 8. So usually we ask for the gradient. Now in this sum, the gradient is given 
and I'm asking for the value of x. Now what's important here is you must remember when you find the derivative you are working out the gradient of the tangent to the function. Now f of x is equal to x minus 5 squared. We want to find the derivative so that we can find the gradient. But remember the rules for differentiation says you cannot find the derivative if there's brackets. So what you have to do is you will foil out your um, two brackets and you end with x squared minus 10x plus 25. Now we will find the derivative 2x minus 10 and remember the derivative is the gradient. And what was given that the gradient is negative 8. Therefore in m's place you can substitute negative 8 and we can solve x. So negative 10 will walk across, it becomes plus 10, minus 8 plus 10 is 2, divide away the 2 and then x's value is equal to 1. With this question I want to show you that you cannot see the maths in isolation. Here they combined analytical geometry with calculus. Let's look at the question. At what point on the graph of f of x is equal to 3x squared does the tangent to f of x form an angle of 45 degrees with the positive x-axis? Now you must understand that an angle with the positive x-axis means inclination. So now you can say your formula for inclination is m is equal to tan theta and m means gradient. Therefore in theta's place you can substitute 45 degrees, you work it out and you find the gradient is 1. Now what's the question? At what point on the graph of f of x does the tangent form an angle? So what are we working out? We are working out a point on the graph. When you take the equation f of x is equal to 3x squared and you find the derivative, the answer is 6x. What does the derivative mean? The gradient of the tangent. And in this case, the gradient was now 1. So in m's place, you substitute 1 and then you calculate x. You work x out. x is a 6. And then they are looking for a point. So a point consists of an x and a y coordinate. So how will you find the corresponding y coordinate? Remember, every x has an original corresponding y. That means you take the original function, not the derivative, the original. And in x's place, you substitute a 6 and then 1 6 squared is 1 over 36, and when you work that out, you end with a 12th. Therefore, the coordinate is 1 over 6 for the x and 1 over 12 for the y. Now you know how to do more complicated examples on the finding the equation of a tangent. In the next lesson, I will explain Typical questions you can find in the exam on Calculus Basics. Click on the video in the right hand corner to take you straight to the next lesson.